Hello and welcome to Florian Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Airfix's brand new, very, very hyped, 124th scale. Uh, this is the Grumman F6 F5 Hellcat. Probably one of the most talked about, certainly YouTube to death, um, kits that has been released in quite a while. Now, I think a lot of uh, speculation about this particular kit being Airfix's greatest kit and everything that's gone through with it. Obviously when it first got released a lot of us, including myself, were really surprised. I had no idea the Wiz was coming. I know a lot of people think I've got a lot of inside information and things like that but honestly when this was released at Telford last year I had no idea whatsoever and to be honest my first thought was a Hellcat. Why? I just, you know, from my point of view, it's such a niche type aircraft. Um, and I was just thinking, it just seems really weird. Why would they do that when not do other things? Um, which I think would be more sort of bread and butter. Uh, because obviously this is technically a blue water aircraft, Pacific theater, specifically things like that, sort of very limited one. Uh, and this was all thoughts just straight off my bat as we were, you know, really soaking in the point of, my God, they've done a Hellcat. Why would you do a Hellcat still? Uh, and things, so it was one of those things. But as time has progressed, and here we are basically, you know, really nine months later, um, and it sort of sunk in that, yes, there is quite a few options out there. Um, obviously down in here, we've got some of the ones we'll talk about in a moment uh, for different countries that have used it, obviously the UK, America, things like that. But really it was seemed very, very niche and why would Airfix go down that route? And there was lots of speculations and to be honest, we've debated this to death over on the Florian Model site for, well, nine months since it's been released about, is this Airfix trying to conquer the US market and trying to get a finger hold in there? Um, you know, are they sort of, you know, trying to, Sort of, you know sort of shoehorn the market a little bit and get known for this type of thing and they're going to develop it is it going to be a bit of a one-off uh, are they not going to do anything else really in this type of scale why do airfix do 124 scale uh, and not 132nd all these different questions and we've answered pretty much most of them i think over the last few months about it and really you still come up with a slight but why? It's very difficult to understand why, especially for something like this. You could understand it if it was a 109, if it was a Spitfire, if it was a Hurricane. Um, and I know people are going to say out there they've really done, you know, there's 24 versions and things like that. But for Airfix to do a new tool one, I think would have been playing safe. For them to do something like this, I think is them taking a risk, quite a large risk. Obviously, there is a lot of financial uh, sort of risk that's been tied into this particular kit. We know it's been two years in the making, uh, a lot of R&D that's gone into this one, so forth and so on. So really, it's interesting that now I finally got my hands on one properly. Obviously, I've seen lots of them around and stuff like that, but to go through and give really an overview to it. I'm not gonna go through and in every single sprue like I normally do, purely because we'll be here all day. And I'll be honest with you, there's guys that are on the internet that have grilled this kit far, far more than I will ever do. Okay, so from my point of view, I wanna give you an overall, what I think of the actual kit. Do I think it's worth the price tag? Let's face it, it's not cheap. We've got it up really for 110 on the PM store. Recommended retail on this is about 120. So from that point of view, it is a significant you know, investment into it. So really, I think what we're gonna do is have a look through it, see what we get in the box, see if it's worth the money, first of all, to go into it, and then we'll discuss the reasons of why you'd perhaps wanna go for a 124th kit if you've never built one before. Okay, and the ins and outs of what's good about 24th scale over 32nd scale, which is pretty much what we'd expect, things like that. So first of all, let's have a look around on the actual box. Enough waffling, as we can see, beautiful box art. Airfix really have gone back to their roots these days. They are producing box art that is absolutely stunning. And when you do see this kit, and to be honest, you know, obviously the PM store, we are a model shop, you know, you see it up on the shelves there. It looks really, really nice. Okay, so it's got very catching box art uh, on this particular one. But the first thing that strikes you is this box is absolutely immense. And the box alone is gonna be what, 60, 70 centimeters? Uh, so it's a big box. The other thing as well, it weighs an absolute ton and there's no shaking around in here. It feels absolutely loaded. You might see, this is still sealed. I haven't been in here at all. Okay, we can have a look down at some of the ones that have been done. Okay, so we can see some very nice details. So we're 
full engine detail as we know, full cockpit detail. Some panels can be removed as well to show it off, so obviously showing the guns. Nice touch and pretty much needed. It's uh, fold up so you can fold the thing up as if you've not uh, got the room to display it whole. And then some other bits on the other side. And then over on here, we've obviously got a little bit about the history of the actual Hellcat Hell itself, all right, and its development, things like that. Then we've got the options that we actually get in the box down here. So, you know, basically we've got Paper Doll, probably the best known, it's been done to death by other manufacturers uh, in 148 scale, certainly as well, from the USS Princetown in October 1944. Okay, so beautiful one with the mouth, and as you know, I'm a sucker for those. Then we've got another one down in here from 1945, uh, off of the the Randolph okay with CV 15 okay then we've got a UK one uh, with the Pacific markings uh, so obviously it's got the uh, the white dot with the actual blue circle down in here for the sort of East Indies area off of HMS Keel D dive yeah, whichever that is. Okay, so that's that one there known as Sunfish on there, and then a nice one down in here. We've got an Indonesian. Uh, from the, actually this is, I didn't realise, I thought this was World War II, see, shows what I know. This is actually from the Indochina War of 1953, okay, with the French markings as well, uh, for Flotilla uh, 1F, okay. Again, I didn't realise they'd done it as a post-war one as well. So again, nice couple of options down in there. The aftermarket guys have jumped on this already, so there is photo etch that's come out for this one. We know there's a little bit of resin coming out for it it might be worth holding on a little bit just to see what falls down the line uh, as you make your way through. So first of all, I need a knife or something sharp. Uh, a knife would be handy, that's a knife. Okay, so let's have a dive down in here. So lots of been spoken about, obviously Airfix, where they have their kits manufactured these days. And if I'm correct in thinking, this one is manufactured in India say it on here somewhere uh, I'm pretty sure or somebody did find out it said in India we were discussing this on one of the vlogs uh, and I do believe this one was manufactured in India okay and there we go Crikey, where are we gonna put all of this this is gonna get very very big and messy very very quickly as you can see straight off of the bat this thing is solid plastic lots and lots of plastic down on here so we're assuming in this um uh, looks like a paper towel in here we've got the clear parts all still seen of this lot um bag number 27 clearly and again looking at it straight off the bat as soon as you pick it up you see this this is soft plastic which is going to worry me now and is worrying me even more okay so um as you can see so we've got one two bags three bags Four, five bags, six bags, <laughs> seven bags, more. Okay, eight sprues. Okay, very, very large sprues. And then we get a bag and a box, bombs away. Okay, down in here, just like this, with all our sort of said instructions in. So if we just put a bit of light out, we can have a go here okay as I said before I'm not going to go through the manual because we will literally be here until uh, Christmas probably could have built it quicker but we'll just have a little bit of a flip all right so again if you've never seen um, Airfix stuff before they've upgraded the manuals over recent years they are a lot better than they used to be so basically we're saying in here you have uh, three versions you can do wings open gear up you're going to be able to do uh, wings open gear down or stowed Okay, so you can have it all folded up. Doesn't look like, and I'm not aware of anybody who's actually made this, so you can do both yet, as in stowed or open. So you have the option, you can have one wing open, one wing closed, so forth and so on. But I don't think there's an option to move it around. Your other thing as well, as you can see down in here, we've got very much a detailed look at the engine, which is quite a nice touch because there's a lot of work involved down in there. Usual thing, Airfix are pushing their own motors, so if you want to put some motors, it's talking about how to wire those through and where to hide the wiring and everything else, quite a nice touch. Uh, and obviously their motors are available, but as you might remember, we tried this with the um, Typhoon and failed miserably. Okay, it wasn't nice and it didn't really work at all. The motors aren't of quality, shall we say. As you can imagine with this particular kit, especially with this size, it's fully detailed and I'm sure you've seen a lot more about it online. But as you can tell by clicking through here, You've got a fully detailed cockpit with every box 
lump, bump, and everywhere else fully detailed on this one. Okay, so right the way through on that, all right. Then obviously you've got your, your sort of decisions about gear up, gear down, okay. You don't have any options perhaps like the 30 second Tamiya's where you could have them as both, all right. It's one or nothing, okay. So we've got some areas down in here. And again, a lot of this detailed work is gonna be hidden and covered up, such as the radio equipment down the rear, but you could have the bottom hatch open so you could get a glimpse in there if you're gonna crawl on your hands and knees and have a look underneath or shove a mirror under it and then be at that correct angle just to be able to see it. Again, yeah, bit weird on that one. Open up various holes for ordnance you want to go in. Nice big spa system running across. Obviously because it's got a wing fold, it's not gonna carry through into the wings, but you can see various di uh, differences on this one. Now, if it's got green, it means it's a, if we find somewhere green, green, green. Okay, green means uh, it's an option, so you might wanna cut those off depending on what versions you're doing, as in gear up, gear down, and stowed. So that's those. Red areas just means a little bit of special load potential uh, from another area, okay? So it's usually a, a built part uh, and showing you that from various angles. So you just get an idea, like showing you here, the different ways around and stuff like that. Okay, again, little details, green section here, you need to sand it off, all right, if you're gonna be doing it as in in flight. This one is all in flight, so it's showing gear up, all tucked away, okay? So working our way right the way through, it's got a usual thing, making sure you keep careful info about where the are if you're opening up holes and where they need to be, because you don't want to be finding them a little bit later on. Okay, and just generally working through the wing spars, the gun system is all going together and all the details right the way through. Again, a lovely attention to detail with the actual way that the guns are going in and a little bit of formal work around it for the actual ammo bays, various things as you can imagine looking great. Okay, flaps and all the areas going down, again, depending if you gear up, gear down, you know, whichever way you're going, wings open, closed, green areas, just making sure of those. It does look like it's got a nice spar system that's going to lock in and hold that in place but again because that's hinged it means you can't have it uh, as in both all right so wing sections going through and then obviously wing sections if you're stowed wing sections if you're in flight wing sections if you've gone down the shops yeah yeah you get the idea okay control surfaces are all separate so you can put those in any type of jaunty angle you quite fear right the way right down then we've got the engine so you've got this center tube type area where your motor is going to go no doubt and all the rest of it okay and then putting in all the handles lumps bumps and everything around the engine okay and again attention to detail is lovely on this one they're not including into it but it is saying about some 22 gauge or 0.7 mil copper wire uh, or lead wire whichever way you want to do it and all the rest of it and then cutting them to the correct lengths these are already done in the lengths for you which are going to make it a lot easier as you make your way through so basically it's for wiring up all your ignition leads and whatnots to your starter to the pots and all the rest of it as you make your way through again going to be worth it once it's done because it's one of those things it's the big old um, double engine on these and there's a lot to see okay so it's well worth spending the extra time doing all of those then you've got your exhaust obviously being fitted onto it you know the various superchargers and the bits and pieces you know what I mean all of that goes on and on and on right the way through until you end up with a very very nice built uh, was it the double wasp engine in these ones I'm not sure is it the 2800 uh, not sure on that one I must admit I'm not up on my engines and again it'd be nice if AFX put the details of what it was on these but um, just keep you guessing okay so again all the cooling and the exhaust systems and everything else and the inlets and everything all the wiring and the hoses obviously you've got the fuel tank lines and everything running through they're all going to go through to make up what will be i'm sure most people will want it to show it off because it looks stunning is going to be that lovely engine all right so i can't imagine many people covering it up uh, or perhaps having it as a nice dual option, which unfortunately you don't get it as a dual option like you do with the Tamiya ones. Uh, but there we go, we get the idea. Okay, but anyway, covers, if you are putting them on, going on now, but I'm sure most people will have them as a separate fit. Okay, right the way over it, right the way through. So again, showing it open or close, totally up to you on those ones. Gear system is a nice system on this one. It's got this nice plate, which is gonna go through. It's gonna make it nice and strong. So you're not gonna have to worry about your gear snapping off with location areas like that. Gear going right the way through, as you might imagine, and then pushing on with everything else. We've got the flaps all going in there, okay, sorted out. Then we've got the weaponry, the fuel tanks, whichever ones you want to have on these. Then we've got the props, the glass, the navigation, recognition markings, things like that, all being put down in there. And then right the way through, 
to the end. Okay, so nice touch down in here. We've got the decal placements for the insides, and obviously we've got the gun areas, things like that, just to keep you up to speed and to detail these off. All right, so very nice to see that. I have to say, I honestly thought it was going to be more complicated than that, but it's not. So that's one bonus. Okay, and then down on here we've got the usual giant sheet for your stencil data. There isn't too much on here, so that's not going to take forever to do all of those, which is a nice touch. Then we've got your markings, as I said before, we've got the uh, British one down in here. So we've got the Navy uh, Air Squadron, March 1945. And then as I say, we've got the Indochina War 1953 uh, in the French markings. Okay, and then as you might imagine, I'm probably not sure we're going to see these everywhere, but there we go, we have got uh, Paper Doll, looking absolutely fantastic. And then down on this side, we've got uh, VF12, okay, which I think is quite nice with the actual red and white table, uh, with the tail and the actual ailerons in the white uh, and the rudder, various things like that. I think that's really nice actually, something that's a little bit different if you did want a different version. The decal sheet, as you might imagine, for a massive kit is massive, okay. And there you go, that's, yeah, that's huge. And again, Airfix have strived and they have come a hell of a long way on this because they are so much better than they used to be. Talk about good, good, solid, proper colour on these ones, which is, you know, to be honest, what we're sort of hoping for. Okay, and if I just grab a, a closer camera, like this one, okay, uh, as you can see, it, it has got that solid, I'll try and catch it in the light, there we go, silk screen printed, look to it really nice they don't look like they're too high i don't think they're going to be a problem on a kit of this scale okay carrier film is pretty much a minimum right the way over all on this and good solid printing actually those look very very nice indeed very very happy with what those look like okay okay so into the plastic so where the hell do we start as i said i'm not going to go through every single item on the sprue um, can find those in far more detailed areas than I can. Okay, first thing that jumps out to you is the stress skin. This thing is covered in a very, very nice stress skin. The other thing that jumps out to me is it's very, very soft plastic. In fact, it's incredibly soft plastic. Okay, um, not noticing too much in the way of flash. I can't see any sink marks or anything else like that at the moment. That actually doesn't look too bad whatsoever but in this scale it's one of those things you want the stress skim and they've delivered it in bucket loads so that's actually really very very nice if we just go a little bit tighter again it's a little bit tricky to sort of catch it in the in the lights hopefully you can see that on the leading edges of those wings everything nicely done over here it's very difficult the trouble that you've got is that Again, it's got that funny texture to the plastic. Don't know why they do it, but it's whatever molding, they don't polish the molds. So it's just a little bit sort of gritty. Again, you can get away with it in this scale, but it's always just a little bit annoying. But definitely stress skin on every panel. You can feel it as you run your fingers over it, so forth and so on. And again, it looks absolutely fantastic. The riveting details, we know they spent a lot of time doing the riveting patterns on this to make sure if it's got it on the real thing, it's got it here. But this stress skin is gorgeous and beautiful. It feels extremely tactile right the way through this particular kit. And to be honest, actually that's not too bad. Considering it's such a soft plastic, we've got no real problems with flash and all the rest of it down in here. The only thing is, and if you've been watching, Steve's been mentioning the actual ejector pins in this, but they're very shallow. They're not as bad, I think, as I was thinking they were gonna be. Considering this is quite complex to get this out, seeing it now, those ejector pins, you know, you're probably talking a couple of a hundredths of a mil deep. So a couple of swipes with the sanding stick, they will go. And also you can get right in there, so it's not a problem to get in amongst them. So it's not like some kits where you, they're just a problem. Those are in everywhere you can get, because as soon as it tightens down to here, they haven't done their usual and just put one in and you lose a bit of uh, the actual former, they've kept it away. So all of these are nice and central inside the areas you want, which again is really, really nice. And to be honest with you, as far as Airfix and ejector pins go, 
I'm not their biggest fan, shall we say, but these aren't too bad at all. So in the great scheme of things, I think that's a bit of a winner. Okay, they're a little bit deeper over here, but we're not worried about over there. We're worried about here, and these are quite shallow and soft, and they're tucked away out the way. They're not in this detail in the middle. They are okay. So there we go. That's not too bad at all on that one. I'm going to run out of room rapidly doing this one. Okay, so... It's funny because now I'm getting this kit on my hand. I've been hearing people harp on on the internet of how bad this is. I've been hearing, obviously, we've got the members on the site. Uh, Paranjit, obviously, works for Airfix. You've probably seen him online doing videos on this. Um, he's a member of Flory Models and done a fantastic step-by-step -step build, photo build, right the way through. Steve, our very own Steve, he's actually doing a video build of this right at the moment. And basically got parts of this going up every single day. And again, it's a little bit of that thing. It's, you know, you get one person says it's great, next person says it's bad. But there we go. But again, this is what you're looking at. You can see it down under here under this, how well that looks. It's almost, as I say, the only way that I describe it is tactile. It's got so many like, stressed skin on it. I don't even know, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna say it, and I never thought I would, but is it overdone? Is the stress skin actually overdone? It just, I'm sure with paint and everything and it's nailed down, you're not gonna have a problem with it. But it just, it's a bit like a quilt. It's like looking at a, a quilt <laughs> right the way across it, purely because obviously it's in square formation, in box system on this one, but it just very much looks like a patchwork quilt, which uh, is surprising because I never thought I'd say that. We have got the old sink mark, if we're being honest now, and I'm starting to get picky on the kit. You can probably see there's one right in there. And again, this is because Airfix continue on using soft plastic and I don't know why but again you can see it coming through down in here all this section down in here and that's because under here you've got this tab here this box there that's that tab there that's that box there so it's it's got a little bit of sink work into it again it's quite handy because you can hide it as part of stress skin but again not much flash which I'm quite happy with the sprue gates and in theory as well, which obviously Airfix get a bit of a kick in all the time over it, the sprue gates are very thin. This is what we're talking about, it's these parts that go on here. So no real problems with that. I've got no issues with flash. And actually that's not bad at all. Very, very nice indeed. Let's stick that down there. Right, now we're getting into the meaty bits. Again, it's just something like these bags. These bags you know, and we're being slightly picky, I know, but these bags look like 20 year old fertilizer bags. They're, they're not even clear. <laughs> you know, you, uh, yeah, okay. I'm being picky now. Uh, but anyway, as I say, hopefully you can get a sense of the scale and the size of these things. My cutting mat down in here is an A2 cutting mat and it, this thing fills it fully. Okay, that's the problem we're having on with this one. Okay, so now we're looking down at the smaller bits. We're starting to get a little bit more of a feel for the kit. So unfortunately, we have got quite a bit of burring, um, which is the, the sandwich where they get together, how it slightly seeps out on the mold. It's always a sign about the mold. Um, and we have got a little bit down on here. We've got a tiny little bit down on the props and things down on here. All right, but if we have a little bit of a run around, okay, so I'm not gonna go everywhere, but you can get a feel for the points. The locating joints on this kit seem to be smaller than anything I've seen before by Airfix, even on their 148 scale stuff. So that's a nice touch. Okay, got no real problems. And this is that double, um, is it R280 engine on these things? Okay, really very, very nice. As in, it's got nice ribbed detail. Okay, no problem at all. And again, nice that it's got extra pins attached to this, which is great because they're not actually on the part. So you can clean those off with no problem at all. And again, down on here with these, they're all out of the way. They're not actually on the parts, things like that. I'm assuming that's your spinner uh, coming up to it. Okay, there's your gearbox, the various areas. Yeah, it's gonna look very, very nice on this one. Again, no real flash which has surprised me, shall we say. I was expecting a lot more flash with this, but we are flash free so far. But it gives you an idea when you see the prop that big. That's a monster prop, that's huge. <laughs> so anyway, it's gonna be one of those ones gonna keep you all busy on the build, to say the least. You'll be there forever doing this one, okay? So again, they're doing this thing where they've got the sprues, you can then take them off, get rid of this huge lump of plastic. Look at the size of that, that's, yeah. 
it makes you wonder why is it got that I know they're doing it to chuck it out this thing in one but if you got rid of all of them I'm sure the weight would come down and so would the size of the packaging but anyway that gives you an idea of the actual size of this it's a monster so as you can see very nice details down in here with these wirings with the electrical things like that we've got the formers and the various items we've got an oil tank down in there bulkheads all those areas and again flash free which I don't know why but I was really expecting to see a little bit of flash on this one it has got ejector pins on this one and I've heard lots of people mention it about oh it's got ejector pins and everything else obviously I'm not building it I'm just commenting on it but it looks like they've actually made an effort to make sure they're out of the way or in not a direct line of sight so they're hidden behind areas and various things like that. Gives you an idea on this, these fuel tanks are crazy. Huge, huge bigs. And the bombs, they're almost like cartoon bombs, they're so big. Okay, rockets, more rockets. Yeah, again, no real problems. What's really nice is though, is that the actual, um, the details that are on these, obviously not so much on these ones here, but like on these uh, braces and the actual, uh, you know, We've got these little guys down in here for the veins to arm the weapon, things like that. Again, very, very nicely done. They all seem to be in scale, which is nice. Okay, so. Next up, huge, huge screws. Okay, again really nice no sign of flash no real sink marks either i must admit it's a couple on those other ones but round here i think we're all okay and again if we just move through you can just generally see nice good small sprue gates right the way through all of these areas no real problems with any of it okay and then obviously we've got a lot of the cowling and the various areas on these they seem to be all very very nice Okay, the end. Again, it's actually, I'll be honest with you, it is sort of surprising me. I don't know what I was thinking I was going to be facing and coming up against here, but it looks like Airfix have taken their time with it, if that makes sense. That's how I would describe this one. It looks like they've actually really thought about this one and gone through. And I'll be honest with you, and, you know, I will be honest, and I always am, their Spitfire was a complete disappointment. Apart from it came with a Kit Kat, but the rest of it was awful. It was just shoddily done. It was a shoddily done kit. It looked like it had been one of those on a Friday afternoon job, and it had just been thrown out. It just didn't work at all. This, on the other hand, is working purely because it's got very good attention to detail right the way through. The parts are all clean and crisp. Definitely weren't on the Spitfire. You know through and through and just like the sprue gates and the various things onto this one very very nice indeed but generally as you can see all the parts good solid pieces the guns themselves considering they're just as i say kit ones you'd be expecting almost to go down the aftermarket route i don't think actually they're too bad at all you're going to be able to get away with pretty much i think straight out of the box on this kit okay which is you know something you don't often say with the larger kits and let's face it i've built a lot of larger kits over the years um, and in some ways i was slightly getting sick of them because they're just so big they take up so much time um, you know as you're working your way through the build they seem to go on forever so what i was hoping is to sort of you know go through the smaller kits so actually seeing this guy is absolutely gorgeous okay so down in here we've got this huge big center spar which is obviously what's going to take the weight and again looks to be very nice detail it's a gorgeous thing about this it's got lovely recessed and raised details classic example just in here we've got raised bolt heads right the way through on this one and very fine raised riveting okay and we've obviously got the recessed and that's actually a very very nice touch with this particular kit and again wheels a little bit disappointing but again i know if you've gone down the vinyl route, everyone would have been like, ugh, vinyl, don't like vinyl. This is beautiful sort of engineering down in here. So as you say, you've got the doors for the actual main gear at the front. And then as you move up here, we've actually got this gorgeous spar system, which obviously is going to be interlocking with the wings. And then obviously the areas around the gear. And then up. And to give you an idea of everything that's going on down in here, this one we've basically got the cockpit details 
So we've got the forward bulkhead, we've got the floor down in here. I'm trying to catch it on the light, you can see all the areas. Very, very nicely done. Right the way through on this one. I've got a little bit of sink mark on this here. If you can see it there in the light, that's because you've got detail on the back. And it's just showing through just a little bit on that one. But again, the bulkhead, very nicely done. Front and rears. I must admit, it is all good, high quality and a little bit of a surprise. I'm not saying I was thinking this was going to be a turd <laughs> and soft and horrible and everything else, but I was. I was expecting this not to be as good as it is. I was expecting it to be very softly moulded and this is why, because when I got this one out of the bag, I was looking here and thinking, ugh, that doesn't look nice. But actually, again, it's looking pretty good recessed and raised details on these ones which is very nice indeed we've got the stress skin on the metal parts as you'd expect and then down here on the smaller parts no problem at all so again you've got that gorgeous stress skin effect and then you've got the raised ones down in here with the fabric and the riveting tail planes we've got the flaps and again lovely details on those and a good good mixture of both of them right the way through. And then these parts up at the end for the other flaps. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, well, so far, we're impressed. Okay, clip ups, nicely done, separate bag in an envelope, and then someone's been out with a loo roll. And there you have it. That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. No problem with those. So we don't have any center seams or anything else like that. Clean, very, very clear parts. You can probably see how clear those are. We've got nothing at all, as in, you know, distortion really in those. Obviously you're gonna get some, but beautifully done. And then obviously two types of the instrument panel. We've got the one with all, everything moulded in and one without if you're going to go down the deck or route. There is aftermarket ones available of that already. A full instrument panel and obviously clear and coloured parts and stuff like that. And there we go. How long was that review? Crikey. It felt like I was going on forever. Apologies if I was. But it's one of those kits where I have to say I'm impressed. Uh, I was expecting this to be extremely or pretty much the same as when I did the Typhoon. Now don't forget, I've done the 124 scale Typhoon, full video build up, uh, that one's shameless plug. Um, and it was a lot of work, shall we say. It wasn't that there was problems with the kits, there's the odd fit issue, various things like that, but generally nothing that basic modeling skills wouldn't take care of. A lot of the difficulties with that one was made myself because we opened it up, we had it ripped apart, as in you could see all the workings. That's why I did it for that particular one. This one, you could do exactly the same thing to it and end up with something really, really nice. Take the entire front end of that off, take off the entire side section, because that's what I would do. I'd do exactly the same as what I did to my Typhoon on this one. I forgot my hands on one and it would look absolutely stunning there's no doubt about it what i love about this particular kit is one the plastic even though it's the really soft one we don't have the flash issues that we've had with other kits we certainly don't have the sink marks that we've had with other kits um, and it looks like it's a good consistency right the way through all the sprues so all the panel lining is the same all the riveting is the same and everything else it doesn't go huge and then narrow and all the rest of it as we find with other airfix kits so that's a nice touch sprue gates huge huge difference they are very fine uh, they're in good locations things like that so again kudos off to airfix with that one but generally to bring out a large scale you know large scale kit like that the trouble that you have is that everything is made or gets you know made to look bigger so if you've got a tiny fault it will look huge on this and that is the trouble but actually i think they've taken the time and obviously spent that time wisely going back having a look at parts designing them in such a way that obviously you're not going to have too many problems with, but also designing them in a way that, you know, technically with the riveting detail and everything going on, you're not getting things that are going to be over the top of each other. So you're going to have to get in there with fillers and various things. It looks like it's a well-engineered kit to go together. And considering its size and complexity, 
The build actually isn't too bad. It's pretty straightforward all the way through. I thought it was going to be a lot more heavy duty than that. And I thought it was going to take longer to go through the review and going through it all in all those areas, purely because it's going to be an enormous, big, complicated build to put this scale of kit together. It's not. So again, from an instructional point of view and a construction point of view, it's been incredibly well thought out and obviously worked very well together in the thought of the modeler as well about how he's going to tackle things and the information he's going to need. So again, a great Kit from that point of view is it worth 110 quid or 120 quid if you're going to pay full price at the end of the day it's always going to be the sticking point and this is something we've discussed on many many live shows on flooring models and our broadcast that we do and we've talked about it and things it's a difficult one to go with because 124 scale enables you to have something incredibly big, incredibly, you know, as I say, detailed and things like that. But it comes at a price because it's very easy to make that thing look like a toy and to make it just look plasticky. So you need to put the level of detail in your painting and weathering to get the most out of the kit to show it off in its best light. Otherwise, it just looks like a block. OK, so from that point of view, you are going to be up against it there. Again, you're going to get the, the people out there, the detractors that are going to say how and then Tamiya can bring out and that's say against their Corsair 132nd with various things so you could have it showing you can have gear up gear down all those different bits and pieces with it and your airfix on a bigger scale can't do that again the trouble is if you're going to make them bigger like this and you want it to have perhaps working gear that can be either shown up or down various things like it it's going to make the build one complex secondly expensive because you're going to have to do the tooling to represent that to be interchangeable and that's going to cost a lot of money. What Airfix I think have tried to do is keep a nice standard build right the way through. Yes it would be nice to have thin very like 0.7 mil I think it is time you do cowlings and things like that fully detailed both sides of them with little magnets that clips it all in place but again that's going to add to the cost and when you're at this scale that's going to ramp up and get out your hands very very quickly and do you want a kit like this for around about 110 pounds or do you want it to be 250 pounds that's I think where you've got to look so in some ways I think Airfix are doing it on a certain budget or they want to do it to a price point and I think they've nailed it because you do get as we've seen a hell of a lot of plastic for your money you're going to end up with a huge large aircraft model in your display cabinet for your money because don't forget 110 you can spend that on Tamiya 130 seconds and end up with a kit a lot smaller okay and without as much detail as that kit that particular kit's got I think it's lovely and I will now publicly say I was wrong and I will take it all back, everything I said against Airfix, because when they first came out with this, I thought they were just shooting for the American market because, you know, they need to break into it. Let's do something that's American. Let's not do a Mustang because everyone's done one of them. So we do something slightly else. And that's why they've done that particular kit. I probably take that back now. There is a lot of options out there. Again, we've just got obviously the French. We've got the UK and American. As we know, other users did use this one. I'm sure the aftermarket guys will be down with a myriad of different schemes to go along with this kit. If they haven't already, they'll be along very, very soon. So I think actually this kit has got plenty of legs to be able to break it up and do other things with it. So generally, well done, Airfix. My tip my hat to you and I take it all back of everything I've ever said against this kit as well because it isn't a soft chewed up piece of toffee as some of their other kits have been. That's a nice, sharp, detailed, well thought out, well presented kit as well. So actually, I think it's an absolute winner. So there we go, my views on the Airfix 124 scale Grumman Hellcat. Don't forget, if you wanna see two fantastic builds on this one, Paranjit has done the photo build for that one, that's on the Florian Model site, and Steve's actually doing it as a video build as we speak here in July 2019. So if you wanna see those builds, pop over to the Florian Model site and you can see exactly how well these kits go together. Am I building it? Hell no, I'm gonna go off and do small things because that's a lot nicer. Anyway, that's it from me, happy modeling, take care. Thank you.